All right, hello and welcome back to another scenery tutorial here presented by Emerald Scenery Design. Now in this tutorial, we're going to need a program called Airport Design Editor, or ADE for short. Airport Design Editor is used to create airport AFCADs, which are basically your basic airport layouts. So your runway and taxiway paths, um, parking, fuel, that sort of stuff. You can even place default buildings if you'd like to through that program. It also gives you um, options to do, you know, vector scenery, place excludes. So really, it's it's a very handy program to have. The term AFCAD actually comes from an earlier program used by FS9 or FS2004 to create these airport layouts such as what we'll be doing today in Airport Design Editor. Okay, we are now in Airport Design Editor. We're going to go up to the File tab and let's hit Open Stock Airport. Search by ICAO or you can also search by airport and city as well so if this ICAO is wrong we can simply search by the airport so let's go to airport here and let's try it this way. Forty one Alpha Reeves. So we have that up here now. Let's hit open. And that's going to open up that airport. Maybe. Okay, here we go. All right. So now we have our airport opened up in Airport Design Editor. Now, we need to make sure that this airport will align with our photoreal scenery. We even need to do this if we plan to make a ground poly in the future and completely replace the runway. This AFCAD is still needed. It has all your taxi lines on it that tells your AI aircraft where to go, where to park, how to depart, where to hold short, all that. So this is all information that your AI aircraft need. So we need to include this file. Even if we cover it up at a later date here, we do need to include this file and with our scenery. So as you'll notice, the background is completely blank on here. There is no imagery whatsoever. So how do we line this up with our photo reel? Well, that is a very simple solution. Underneath the Add tab here, you will see there is a menu item labeled Image. So when we click on that, it just brings up a box here with your file name. So you're going to search for whatever image you want to import in. And then it gives you corner coordinates down here. When we obtain the photo reel, we did obtain everything we need to add in an image into this background. Now there are other ways to add in images into Airport Design Editor, but I would recommend using the imagery you are going to be using in the simulator. That will allow you to make sure that this runway and taxiways all get lined up with the photo reel and they're not going to be offset if you switch data sources. So always use the data source you intend to use for your photo reel. Let's go to where our files are located. Mine is inside a separate drive here, or on a separate drive, inside a scenery projects folder. Which then we have a Tlassi Municipal Airport folder in here somewhere. Okay, Tlassi Municipal. So we have our imagery here in a separate folder. Okay, so we're just going to open up our bitmap up here. I have not created a, a, a JPEG yet. So let's open up this bitmap, open with Adobe Photoshop, or you can open with GIMP, whatever you want to do. I had already had it open, I guess, over here, the PSD version. So let's just exile that for now. Now we see the photo reel for our airport, Tlassi Municipal Airport. So what we want to do is, first of all, this file is going to be quite big. So let's look at our image size here. Airport Design Editor only allows you to have an image size of, I believe it's a, about a maximum of, I want to say about 7 megabytes, 7, 8 megabytes, if I remember correctly. So we need to make sure that we get this down 
to a size that the airport design editor can load successfully. So we're going to view our pixels here. This image width is 6,144 pixels wide by 7,168 pixels tall. So this image size is 120, or yeah, 126 megabytes as it is right now. So we need to get that down to safely six or seven megabytes. So let's decrease the width of this just a little bit and see what happens. So let's go maybe, um, let's go 5,000 for the width. Then let's bring our resolution down to 72 pixels per inch, which is your standard. And we can, since it's taken it down to 3750 now, we can kind of leave it there, I guess. It's not going to do much of a difference. So that brings our scale, scales our image down a little bit. You really want to make sure that you have this image as high resolution as possible. So, if we, if I was to redo this, I would honestly go into S Builder X, recompile another background image, and cut it as close to this runway as you can on both sides. That means you're going to get as much of that runway and taxiway into your image as possible without disturbing the coordinates, and you'll have the proper corner coordinates and all that that means you'll have a higher resolution than what we're going to have right now in Airport Design Ender, which in turn means that your runway and taxiway alignment is going to be a heck of a lot better. But for now, we're just going to import this in. If the quality is too bad, we'll go back and we'll make an image or make another image in S Builder X. But let's try this. So let's go to save or file save as and hit JPEG we do not need this to be in any form in any format other than JPEG so we can just simply save it as the same name doesn't matter it's a different format okay looking at our quality here we have a quality of 12 and our file size is 14.8 megabytes with the baseline optimized format selected I would if your program gives you the option to choose any of these optimized formats I would highly recommend choosing baseline optimized over the standard setting that decreases the file size quite a bit as it's optimized the coding inside the file so with our standard option it's 15.3 megabytes that's just a waste of space so let's optimize that 14.8 now that's a little bit better we can even look at progressive if we want to, although that's probably not going to help us a lot right now. 14.6, eh, not a whole lot. But what the heck, let's go ahead and select it. It's smaller. With our quality here, we can... Let's try to just take this quality down to 11. That gives 10.1. Take it to 10. 7.6. Let's try 7.6. Let's see what this does. So... We've saved that file as a JPEG. It is 7.6 megabytes in size. Okay, so we can probably work with this quality. That's the max zoom that you really want to do right there. Of course, we're going to be zoomed in more than that. But let's try to work with this first before we go and sidestep any and create another image in uh, S Builder X. Okay, so. The file was created when we created this photo reel. It's a text file. It should have the same name as your image when it was generated. Let's go ahead and open this up. You'll see in here it has north, south, west, and east coordinates in it. This is what you need to place this image in Airport Design Editor. So I'm just going to throw this off into my second monitor here. You guys are not going to be able to see it, but that is all right. So let's open back up Airport Design Editor, hit the Add button, or not hit it, but hover over the Add button. Let's hit Image again, hit the little button over here to the right that has the three dots. That's going to open up a window here that you can search for that image. 
let's just bring up our folder right here. We got our, if we right click up here on our bar, we can copy address as text. That is going to copy the address to this folder on our hard drive. This makes navigating a lot simpler. So paste that into the file name directory here. It's just going to open up that folder. So hit open. Now we see all of our files in there. Now we got to figure out this is our JPEG file, so this is the file we want. Let's see if our file size agrees, so let's hit open. Okay, the size of this image is approximately 7.5 megabytes or more. Images of this size may cause problems with ADE in general, generally will offer little benefit in the display. You can try and proceed, but ADE may fail to load it now or in the future. Alternatively, please resize the image to make it smaller. Click OK and try to load it or cancel the stop loading. Let's try to load the image. Let's just see what happens. I haven't tried doing this for a while. Usually I go back and resize it. So let's, uh, let's load it and see what happens. Okay, so next we need to enter in our corner coordinates. So hit this checkbox here. It's going to open up these four boxes down here. Now the next thing you need to remember when typing in your coordinates here is north, west, south, east. That is how you're going to put your coordinates into these boxes. So top left latitude is north, longitude is west, bottom right latitude is south, longitude is east. So north, west, south, east very easy to remember. Looking over here at my document, I'm just going to copy our north corner or, or yeah, our north corner coordinates here. Make sure we get all the numbers copied, no spaces, anything like that. Leave the decimal in there, obviously, and we'll paste it there. So, north. Now we need west. Make sure we get our the minus sign in there. So, we get the proper coordinate. If not, our image is going to be stretched over quite a long distance. South. And east. Okay, so now we got north, west, south, east. Make sure all the numbers are different that you didn't accidentally forget to copy when the numbers you tend to do that if you get tired when you're doing this so all of our numbers look different so we're gonna assume that we're good so let's hit save and see what happens there we go now we got our background image perfectly aligned well not perfectly aligned we got our background image into ADE now we can start aligning our runways and our taxiways so there are a couple different ways that you can approach this. If you're more the type of person that just kind of likes to start from scratch, I'd recommend leaving the runway in here as it's perfectly good. You can just change this, the, uh, the length, width, and heading of it. Or alternatively, if you're not the type of person that likes to start from scratch, you can just leave all your taxiways in here and just move things around as you need. Um, now, I'm more of the type of person that likes to do this kind of stuff from scratch. I, you know, I may reuse some stuff here and there. I definitely try to leave as much of the core stuff here as I need. Let's go ahead and remove our taxiways. So we're going we're gonna to completely remove our taxiways. We'll leave in the main taxiway here, as that doesn't change drastically. But let's take out all these connectors. We'll take out, or we'll change up our, uh, our runway taxi path here. Um, then we'll take out this top stuff here, the top taxiway as well. So let's just start at runway 13 here. We do not want to delete our hold short marker, but we do want to delete our nodes here. So let's just highlight them by left clicking on them and hit the delete key on your keyboard. So we'll want to delete all those nodes. Now with this, we have one here and we have one here 
but if we delete this one it's going to delete this line and if we delete this one that while that's deleting our hold short we do not want to do that even though we can bring that back later on but it's easier just to leave them in here and connect them so we're going to highlight this line here just hit delete that deletes it for us also you'll see these little yellow boxes right here those are your taxi signs your default taxi signs so if you plan or if you're not planning to create custom taxi signs for your airport you can leave these in and that'll produce a default taxi sign there where that's at where the gray bar is so let's continue deleting our taxiways here just gonna delete the line um, we'll delete that these little white circles along your runway those are lights and this here is your airport um, marker so you'll want to leave that in I don't believe you can delete it either way so we'll leave that in we'll kind of move that off to the side here because I like to reposition that after we've kind of found the center of our airport the taxi sign here we'll kind of move it up here out the way hold short put it right there that's about where the hold short is it looks like even though it's a little worn and delete that so we don't need that and delete this line and we're going to delete that line okay these are your runway starts these little red circles here I highly recommend deleting these I would recreate them um, you can leave them in there and attempt to line them up yourself, but Airport Design Editor will automatically align those to the runway for you when you create them. So if you're going to be moving your runway, I highly recommend just deleting those and starting over. Okay, so now we got all of our taxiway disconnected from our runway. So let's just take a look here. Looks like we're pretty high on the runway over here. And kind of little bit high over here so we need to change the orientation of our runway to try to match this heading so this is kind of trial and error there's probably a better way to do this um, let's do this first let's let's move this taxi path off to the side here we'll kind of get this taxiway sign and hold short out the way okay so there's a little bit of a if you click on the runway on one of the runway there's going to be a little ball that appears you can use that to change your orientation or you can right click and go to edit object as well and it gives you the option to change your heading down here at the bottom so for right now let's just hit this little circle down here let's do it this way so let's kinda uh, let's just see what that does so looking at our runway okay so we're still overlapping up here we got a lot of room over here so we need to bring that up a little bit more let's try that okay that is fairly decent it's probably off a little bit so let's just select the runway again here yeah, I always do this. Select the runway and we'll just drag it into place about matching the end of the runway there. And we'll check this end. We got a little bit of length that we kind of need to catch up on here. So we'll have to figure out the length of this runway. Uh, the easiest way to do this is using Google Earth. If you do not have Google Earth, you can just eyeball it by right clicking on it, edit object, and increasing the length in meters until you're satisfied with it lining up, or once the runway lines up perfectly. So kind of looking here, we're overlapping on this side, so we need to change our heading a little bit. So let's see here, which way we're going to go. So let's change, it's changing it by 0.1. So let's go to 0.3. I may be going the wrong way here. If it comes towards us, we're going the right way. Okay, it went away from us. We're going the wrong way. So 
back to 0.4 and up to 0.5 hitting OK let's see what that does now I see there's a little bit a uh, little bit sticking out on this side a little bit on this side let's go up to the top of the runway again up to 1.3 and we'll look it looks like we are pretty much aligned we just need to kind of increase the width or the uh, excuse me the length of this runway so we can match up here so I do not believe there's any overruns or anything no okay so there's no overruns or anything like that probably wouldn't be it's a fairly small strip um, there's not a blast pad either so this runway is going to go all the way up to the end here there's not going to be any offset whatsoever so let's go to edit here bring up that menu uh, actually it's back out let's go to Google Earth now let's uh, let's bring up Google Earth and let's see what the length of our runway is now on Google Earth I have this airport already marked so I can simply just click on it here and navigate to the airport anybody following along or using the same airport you're just gonna have to type in the airport name to locate this airport okay so let's scroll into runway 13 here let's go up to tools ruler now it's measuring currently in feet so we want to change this to meters so we don't have to do any conversion and let's line this up about squared here at the end of the runway with the side of the runway so we have something to go by that's straight so let's scroll in the 3 1 and we're going to do the same thing here we're fairly straight on that edge it's there's a little bit of warping with the image so it looks off a little bit but it's not that bad okay so we have 982.52 meters and eh, let's go ahead and pop this window up let's change that so what I say 982.52 meters edit object so let's say 982.5 we'll add in that 2 if we need to okay let's check the top of the runway again scroll up there yeah it's a little bit looks like still overlapping there so let's go ahead and add in that too not going to change it a whole lot but it'll give us a little bit more length okay now we're overlapping on the sides of the runway here so we will want to change that as well let's just do that in google earth again so let's go to the corner of the runway right here at 3-1 let's click there and we'll go to the corner down here so that's approximately 22.75 meters in width so going back selecting our runway again go down here uh, 22.9 okay so 22.9 and 22.75 so So our runway width is actually wider here than it is here. It is a different image resource though, so we got to keep that in mind as well. But this gives us a, a rough in the ballpark settings. Okay, so let's just increase this as we need to to try to get it to match up with the sides here. Um, we don't want to have any of the cement showing through. So let's go to um let's just bump it up to 23 maybe let's see what that does how about 24 okay so 24.9 is fairly decent 
may be a little too big. Let's bring it. 23. See what 23 looked like again. Yeah, there's still a little. Oh, let's uh, let's do 24.5. That should be okay. Yeah, that's fairly decent. So 24.5. Um, uh, it's still sticking out a little bit there. 0.6. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so let's replace our taxi path on our runway here. So lining up about the center of the runway at this point right here. And we're going to take put that about center of the runway there. Make sure we get lined up. We want this to come all the way to the end of the runway. And it needs to be as dead center as possible. So let's scroll out here. Let's grab a hold of that and stretch it up here. I only need two points for this initially. Of course, when we add in our connectors here to the taxiway, it's going to add in more points. So let's make sure we get that all the way up here. Dead center into the end of the runway. Okay, if you haven't already, let's go ahead and create a save file for this. Do not want to lose any of our work. So let's hit Save Airport As. It's going to ask us a uh, project name. So it's going to put in the ICO of the airport with ADEX. Then it's going to put in if you've defined any initials and your uh, settings on here. It'll put your initials, whatever initials you want to use. For us, we're going to be using Emerald Scenery Design because that's the name of our scenery design group here. So next it's going to ask us where do we want to save this. So let's hit open folder. Let's go ahead and save this into our, not our imagery folder, but our Tallassee municipal folder. Also what I like to do is I like to take this JPEG here and cut it to that folder as well. So everything is with, the, with what it needs to be. So we're going to hit up here the address bar again, copy dressed as text. Let's paste it in here. We're gonna have to add another backslash here. And we can hit save. Also, we probably could have done it through here as well, but both works the same. So we don't need to put a comment there, so just leave that blank. Let's hit save. Airport saved, and we'll see an AD4 file pop up in our folder. And that is our save file. So now we've got our project saved, we've got our taxi path stretched back out to link the runway, and we've got our runway aligned with our photo reel runway here. Next thing we need to do is align our taxiways. I'm going to delete this here because we do not need it. I'm going to delete that point. Delete that point. Uh, and we'll leave these two points here. So let's take this. We need to line up. That with the... Well, let's... Let's see here. What's our taxi we look like? So I can't tell if that has lines down the side or not. Let's just say that probably doesn't have these yellow lines down the side. It has a, a worn center line there. So let's take out these yellow lines on the side. So we're going to click on our taxi path here so that it highlights orange to edit object. You'll see here all your left edge, center, and right edge settings. So it's showing lights on the edges. It's also so showing solid for the edge color. So let's hit or select that drop down and let's check none for both the left edge and the right edge. And that's going to remove those yellow edges on the side. Also for the sake of alignment here, let's kind of start small on these taxiways. So let's change the width to, let's just say 9 meters for now. Something easy to remember. 
and we're going to kind of line that up as best as we can with this taxi line right here. It's also centered or centering as best we can on this taxiway. Now let's take this. We're going to drag it here. You need to drag this all the way to the other side of the airport, so zoom out a little bit if you need to. And we're going to do the same thing, align with this taxi line right here. You can barely make it out there. And then just bring up a straight line up here. You don't need to necessarily align exactly with this taxi line, but make sure it's as dead center as possible. We're more worried about aligning with this line right here. Okay, so we are aligned now. And you will notice that we're kind of almost overlapping over here, and that's probably because the taxiway is not necessarily straight. So we'll be creating another point right here in just a second. So that will help to kind of straighten this out. So for now, let's find out what our taxiway width is. Okay, so looking at approximately 11.5 meters, probably uh, it's going to have to be a little bit more than that, probably. Let's look here. So let's change this to 11.5 for our width. Okay, so that's about on the money, 11.5. So let's just say maybe for safety, 11.6. And that still doesn't do a whole lot. Eleven point eight. Okay, let's say eleven point eight just to be safe. Okay, so we've got that now. So let's find out where our hold shorts are supposed to be here. Our taxiways are so worn at this airport, it's kind of hard to see where things go. Okay, the Google imagery is a little bit more updated. It shows the, uh, looks like the hold shorts have been repainted. This was taken in 2015. So they're approximately a little bit less than halfway down the taxiway. So we'll just kind of have to guesstimate that on here. You can kind of make it out right here where it's been. So we're going to place our hold short centered on that. And we're going to need to do that for every single one of these taxiways here. So we've done it there already. And we've done it there. Let's make sure we're saving quite frequently here. ADE is a pretty stable program. It's a heck of a lot more stable than S Builder X is, but you never want to take that chance if you don't have to. So we're kind of not aligned there, so let's align that a little bit better. File. Save airport. Okay. So we got our runway lined up. We've got our hold shorts lined up. We also got this main taxiway up here lined up. So next we're going to make our connector taxiways here. So Go to this button right here, Add Taxi Link. It is the blue link, not the green link. That is your apron link, so that's for parking. This is for your taxiway. So let's note the arrows here on this. We got an arrow pointing to our right here. So that's our flow of traffic. And for the runway, we got the arrow pointing to the left. So even though your AI will change runways depending on weather conditions it's good to keep that flow going so let's start at our hold short here and we're going to click at the center of our hold short 
So let's click, hold down, and drag to this point right here, and it should automatically make a curve in the taxiway. You should not need to make a rough curve by drawing links. So release, there we go, it's made a curve. But it is also resized our taxiway size to 38.48 meters and it's made it concrete. So that's a mistake on my part. We should have changed this setting before we got started. So let's go ahead and change this to asphalt. And we'll change this to 11.80 meters. And we're going to need to go to our pointer tool here, select this taxi line, edit it, 11.80 meters, concrete, select asphalt instead, hit none, we do not need the solid edges. We'll keep the lights and lines in the center and we'll keep the lights on the sides as well. Also, very important, we need to make sure for every single taxiway we do that this draw surface and draw detail is check marked. If these are not check marked and you try to convert this file to prepared, your taxiways will not appear. So make sure these are checked. Okay. So that's made our line. Now as you can see, it's made our corner here. It's rounded off this corner. This top corner here is kind of pointed. So I'll show you in just a second here how to how to make that squared off or kind of cheat that and make it squared off. Um, we got our hold short down here. As you can see, it's showing the painted hold short on top of our taxiway. So that means we've successfully connected it. Now we need to connect the runway to that hold short. So we're going to do the same thing. Use our taxiway link up here. We're going to try to follow this line down the best we can. Click on our link, on our link here. Kind of eyeball it or a little off. We'll correct that though. And we're going to drag it up to our hold short. There we go. And we're still fairly centered on our center line here, so that adjustment didn't harm it that much. We do need to remove the solid outer edges here, even though our uh, taxiway material type and width is correct, we still need to get rid of these left edges. So there we go. Now our edges are cleared up. And we got our runway connected with our taxiway. So one down, a couple more to go here. I think there's four total. Yep, so three more to go. So we just need to repeat that process for the most part on these additional three here. Okay, so we have connected all of our taxiways to our runway now. So let's go ahead and make our apron up here. So we got our apron. We also got a little bit of a parking right here. We're going to look at this little box right here. It says add aprons. To the right of that, it has a checkbox or a drop down that allows you to select the surface material type. Since our taxiways and our runway are asphalt, this looks to be asphalt as well. We're going to click Asphalt. Next, we're going to hit Add Apron. And let's go over here to this corner. And click once. It's going to add a point. Go to this corner. Click again. It's going to add another point. Let's just go ahead and click right here. And we'll click over here. Okay, I placed a couple more points than I really wanted to right here. So, let's highlight and delete these points. We don't need those points. Let's drag this, keeping this aligned best we can. There it's this. 
and keeping the line here as best we can as well over here as well okay now that gives us our apron need to adjust some of these points just a little bit yeah let's go ahead and hit save airport again Okay, now we need to connect this apron with our taxiway and we'll add some parking over here. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add a taxi link over here. So asphalt, let's set this to zero meters or um, yeah, let's let's set this to let's set this to 10 meters. And let's just click over here, click and drag to about there. Okay, so we do not want any solid edges, so we're going to set those to none. We do not want any edge lights, so we're going to take those off as well. Don't need any center lights. Don't need a center line, so we're going to check that off. That's good. Let's just make this like... You know, like I wonder if we can probably even take that to like zero meters. Okay, let's just take that to zero meters. So that's just the taxi path there. We should just done that from the beginning. And let's scroll down here to about where our last parking is going to be at. And kind of roughly line that up. Okay, so we need to create another one attaching this point to this line down here. So we're just going to kind of follow our line down, roughly add this in, drop it on that point there. Let's see here, we got a lot. Points kind of screwing us up. Let's try something here. Let's let's move that over a little bit. Let's just draw our from this point to this point. Okay, so we need to figure out how wide that taxiway is there. As you can see, it kind of has got a chute design to it here. It kind of starts out wide down here, then it narrows up. So let's look and see what the narrow part is. Start from like right there. Go to about there. So that's saying about 7.93. So let's go to 10. Take that 8 out. Take the extra 1 out. So we got a 8 meter wide taxiway there. Kind of adjust that a little bit. It's not going to be perfect. You can only do so much in here. Okay, so we need to take out our center line, need to take out our lights. Um, actually, no, let's leave the edge lights on right here. We can always change that later. But let's definitely take out the center line and the center lights. Our taxiway is now connected to our apron up here. We got a taxi line going here. Now we can switch over. We're going to want to make some parking spots here. So let's just say ramp GA small. So I don't know how many you want to create here. Let's just create a few. So let's say one, two, three, four, five. And let's put, let's put a ramp GA medium over here by the, by the hangar. Okay, so we want to line our heading here as best as we can. 
So let's just kind of That seems to be fairly centered on the line there. So 40.9 for our heading. Let's just copy that and let's paste it onto every single one of these here so we get all the same headings. So you can roughly kind of see where your parking T is going to be at there. Um, let's let's go ahead and move these all the way up to the to the edge here. Actually, looking right here, we got our fuel tank. So let's delete this one. Let's grab our fuel trigger. We can. This little yellow box here defines a uh, a fuel station model, so just delete that. It's a different model than this one over here. This is an actual tank, so we're going to actually place a tank there later on. Now let's change the size of this because it's kind of big. Let's see, what's the radius of these? So a radius of 10 meters. So let's change this radius to 10 meters to get that circle a little bit smaller. Okay, cool. That gives us a radius of 10 meters. Need to get our heading the same as well. So 40.9 for the heading. Spacing's about the same. It's pulled up to the edge there. this one up to the edge as well this one and this one okay so we got four GA small parkings one GA medium parking and a fuel parking spot since we have a fuel tank here if you'd like to be able to refuel at your airport, make sure you move this fuel trigger to your over your parking spot here. Maybe we can kind of trick it here. Put the barely the corner in there, make kind of a diamond shape. The goal here is you only want to be able to refuel on this parking spot. You don't really want to necessarily, you know, park here or park here then hit that fuel trigger and refuel if you don't need it. So we're just going to kind of make a diamond shape here and let that fuel trigger kind of come down onto this one while keeping it clear of the other parking spots here. Let's go ahead and save that. Now make sure if you're going to add in this fuel trigger or think you're going to add it in, never delete this fuel trigger in the beginning. As far as I know, you cannot replace a fuel trigger on here. Okay, now our fuel trigger is aligned where it needs to be. Now we just need to t connect our ramps here, or our parking tees, with our taxi line, or our taxiway line. So we will use the add apron link up here. It's the button that right next, or it's the button to the right of the taxiway link. So click the add apron link. And we're just going to Roughly click down here, try to get it as lined up as you can. Click, hold, and drag to about the center of this, and you'll see a green line appear. That green line appears, you did it correctly, you're good to go. Okay, I don't believe you need any of either of these boxes checked. It's been a while since I've done this, so. Let's just uh, let's try this. Let's uncheck these boxes and let's see what happens. We can always change it later. Everything here is changeable. So when in doubt, experiment, find out what works and what doesn't. So let's just uncheck those. 
with the set to zero, we've got all of our lights and lines off. Let's kind of reposition that one a little bit there. And let's hit save airport. Okay, so now we have all of our taxiways connected. Everything's connected down to the runway. We do have our center or our airport thing here. I just kind of like to place that about dead center of the runway. Or if it's a kind of complex airport, about dead center of the airport works as well. Okay, this little circle with the W is your windsock indicator. Our windsock, as you can see, is right here. You can make it out by the shadow and the orange texture here. So if you want, this is just going to give you that very, very basic default FSX or FS9 windsock. So if you're wanting to use that, just kind of center it on that. If not, just delete that and you can add in another model later. So we're going to add in another model eventually. So let's just delete that. We do not need it. Now what we do need is our tower view, which is this right here. And we also got a 3D tower right here. This is more or less one of those just pole style towers. But um, for now, let's just put that 3D model there. We can change that later. And let's line up our tower view about centered on that. Okay, save again. Okay, so now we have all these corners where the uh, where the cement textures or the asphalt textures just not overlapping. So kind of a way we can trick this and get this stuff covered up is to simply use our apron tool. So just select the asphalt here. We'll go over here a little ways. Click make a point. Make another one. I always end up making more than enough or more points than I need to. Okay, so that gives us roughly a uh, more defined and better edge there, a better matching edge. So we can do that with every single one of these here. And that'll kind of just make that come together a little bit. You'll have to kind of adjust the point placements to get it looking all right. You want to use, typically you want to use as the minimum amount of points that you can to get the desired effect. And for that last point to uh, close out that last point, just double click and it closes that out. Okay, so now we've got all of our corners that we need filled in. So everything's very closely matched with our our taxiway. There's still a little bit sticking out over here, and if you need to, you can add in points. Just click on this uh, this blue node here. Just wherever you kind of need it, just click on the line and it'll add in another one. Like I said, you want to use the minimum amount of those as you can, but you can kind of just, you know, drag and... There, it's a little bit better lined up that way. Let's see. Looks like it kind of does it right here at the top as well. So we'll just add another point in there and just ever so slightly tweak that. And kind of does it right here as well. So if let's put another point in there. And we'll just move that slightly up. Oops. Okay, now this is a very important step. We do not want to miss this. Make sure before you export this airport or this AFCAD that you add in your airport or your runway starts again. 
So let's go hit add, go down to runway start, click that. And we can either select runway 13 or runway 31. Let's just keep it at runway 13. Click add start. It's going to add that start. We'll do it again. Runway start. Runway 31 is already selected now because it's the only runway in here that does not have a start. So click add start. And now our starts are perfectly aligned where they need to be. Remember to hit save. We want to make sure that change saves. Then we just kind of take one last look over this. We can come back and tweak this as we need, but our basic layout's all here. We got our runway lined up, or all of our taxiways are lined up, and we got our apron lined up fairly well. Now, they may look lined up right now, but once you put the photo reel in there, since your photo reel is going to be a lot more high res than this is, the taxiways and runways are going to line up slightly different. So we may have to go in here and increase the width or, you know, drag a couple of points around to make things line up a little bit better. Okay, so now that we've got this done, we are ready to export this. So we're just going to go up here to the File tab. You will see Compile Airport. Now it's going to ask us where do we want to compile this BGL to. So if you're lazy, you can just leave it set as your desktop, or if you'd like to, hit open folder again. Let's go back and let's get that folder copy dressed as text. Let's click in front of that name, paste that in. Remember that in that backslash. Then we can hit save. And that'll save it into that folder once we hit compile here. So make sure you like your project name. So that's typically going to be the same name as what your save file name was, which is OK. Let's hit Compile. And it says Airport Compiled. And as we can look over here in our folder, we now have a BGL file. So now, as far as getting this BGL file to work, if you haven't already, in your add-on scenery folder of your flight sum, let's just open up... Um, Let's let's do this in Steam Edition. So F Flight Sim X Steam Edition. So let's go to the Add-on Scenery folder. It's got the default scenery and texture folder in here. Although typically you do not want to use these, especially for third-party scenery. If you're just kind of throwing you know your own personal files in there, you can do that. But it's better practice to create another directory inside this folder and to run the scenery out of that. So let's click. Add new folder. Tulassi Municipal. Inside that folder, we need to create a scenery folder. Later on, we may need to create a texture folder if, you know, if we're going to be adding textures to it. But since we do not have any textures right now, there's no need to create one at this moment. So let's open up that scenery folder, take our BGL here. And we're just going to copy that into that scenery folder. So all your BGL files are going to end up in your scenery folder. Now we can fire up Flight Simulator X Steam Edition. We'll activate this scenery. And we'll take a look and see how it looks in the sim. So to activate the scenery, you should already be familiar with this if you're wanting to do sceneries, but we'll just go through it anyways. I'm going to hit our Settings tab. I'm going to go into Scenery Library. Hit Add Area. It's going to take us automatically inside of whatever folder we were in last time into that Scenery folder. So let's back out to the FSX folder here. Go to Add-on Scenery. We're going to click this Tulassi Municipal folder once. Hit OK. Now it's brought us inside of here. Very simple, just anywhere in this white zone down here. Click once, and it will add that entry to your scenery library. Now remember to hit OK, and it's now going to create the necessary indexes that it needs to, to add that scenery into the simulator. Okay, so we're off to a good start. Looks like we've started on our runway. Just kind of zoom out here. We are a little off-center. Let's go 
aircraft tail. And we'll just enter into slew mode here. Hold down F3 for a couple of seconds, and I'll get our altitude up. Let's point our view down. We'll just take a look here. Okay. Okay, so we got our runway, runway 31. We got our taxiway here. You can see, we got a nice sharp corner there. Kind of navigate down this way. All of our hold shorts are there. So we got our hold short there. We got our taxiway sign there. That's another thing I forgot to do. Make sure you put your taxiway signs wherever you want them at, or else they're just going to be out in the grass. Okay, we can go down this way. And our apron has showed up, so our apron is there. It's nice and connected. Now, if you look in Google Earth, this taxiway here kind of just cuts off. I'm not sure if we can get that exactly here or not, but that may be something we can kind of go back and look at. Um, it seems to uh, take your line all the way up to this point here, though. So just kind of glancing over the airport here, it looks like everything worked how we wanted it to. There's a line here on the side. Try to see if we can get that removed. As you can see, it automatically put the curve in, so our taxiway curves are all there. But it put our, put our hold short markers in. Um, up here, we, our apron has gone off of our our um, airport skirting, but that won't matter because pretty soon all this airport skirting is going to be replaced anyways. We're going to have to redo all this airport skirting. And we can see we got our tower over here right where we placed it. And if we go in the tower view, there we are. All right, that is how you add in an airport AFCAD using Airport Design Editor for FSX or Lockheed Martins prepared.